Welcome back everybody to the CCMP route course. In this video, what we're going to be taking a look at doing is configuring R20, which is way on down over here, to a little higher up there, there we go, to basically be the frame relay switch. In GNS3, you can add in a built-in frame relay switch if you're so inclined. Um, I did create a video on that a while back. If you're interested in uh, looking that video up, it's configuring G frame relay in GNS3. Um, this is just an, uh, a different variation of the same video. Um, so what I'm going to be doing here in this video, specifically for the CCMP route course that I am in the, pro in the process of developing and recording, it should be out here soon. You'll, you guys should start seeing material for that coming out here really, really soon. What we're going to be doing is getting the, the router 20 ready to run the configuration for our topology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Global Config and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I get some feedback there. There we go. Um, what I had to do, first of all, is I had to type in the command frame relay switching. That turns on the capability. Next thing I have to do is I have to come in here and I have to go underneath all the interfaces that are going to connect to all of the other routers. So in this case here, do show IP interface brief. And that is going to be the serial 2 slash 0 through 2 slash 3. So interface serial 2 slash 0. I'm going to no shut the interface. I'm going to type in the encapsulation is frame relay. The frame relay interface type is going to be DCE or data clocking equipment. This is the side that tells how a serial interface how fast to send. I'm going to hit the enter key and I'm going to come in here and type in clock rate of 120 clock rate of 128k. We don't need it to be much faster than that because it's just frame relay. You can go higher than that, but I don't see the reason to for just the lab demonstration purposes. So that's what the, same, the configuration we have to put on all the individual interfaces. So I'm going to type in do show run interface serial 2 slash 0. That's going to pull up. I'm going to grab all this configuration right here. And we're going to type in interface serial 2 slash 1. No shut. And I'm going to go ahead and copy paste that config. And interface serial 2 slash 2. Copy and paste that config. Uh, no shut. And then interface serial 2 slash 3. No shut and copy that config in as well. That is going to get the base configuration up for all of the individual interfaces. So do show IP interface brief. All these interfaces will be up down here momentarily. There's a 30 second timeout that comes at the interface level. So once that 30 second timeout expires, then what will end up happening is all the interfaces will go down. The reason why they will go down is the remote end isn't up yet. So R5, 14, 15, and 11 are not ready to go yet. So now what I've got to do is from serial 2 slash 0 through 2 slash 3, I have to go ahead and configure all of the frame relay mappings. This is a very manual process. Again, you can do this in the frame relay switch if you're so inclined, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it through the router. So um, in the exam for the 300-101, it just specifies that you need to be able to describe this stuff. We are going to do more than just describe. So what I'm going to do is interface serial 2 slash 0. I'm going to type in, I have the del C mappings right here. So if you look real close, you'll see 515, 514, 511 to get me to the remote end. And then I will specify that and tell it on the remote end what it needs to be able to talk to. And I've got that, excuse me, I have all the del C mappings already pre-built. And then we will just, I will go in and test a couple of them by going to the individual routers and configuring those interfaces. So that'll be how that comes into play. So we're going to go ahead and type in frame relay route and you have to specify the first DLC, which the first DLC here is going to be 515 and we're going to specify it's going to go to interface serial 2 slash 3 and that DLC is going to be 115 on the remote end. So you're basically saying from R5 to R15 I'm going to go ahead and send that in to serial 2 slash 0 that should go out 0 2 slash 3 towards R15 using the Del C 115. So it's um, R15, I'm sorry, uh, 155. 155. R15 to 5. So then I do that. Now, I'm going to continue to do this process over and over and over again. So I'm going to say 
I'm going to go ahead and come back here. I'm going to say that uh, 14 is going to go to 2 slash 2, and it's going to be 154. Um, that'll be from 5 to 14, it'll be 145. And if you can see up here, I got for, to get to, back to R5, you're going to use 145. And then we're going to go 511 and to 2 slash 1. And underneath that one, 11 will be 115. So that's how we have that. So now, a do show frame route, you'll see that they're inactive. That's okay though. The remote end interfaces aren't up yet. So now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go to the find my mouse, there it is. I'll go into interface serial 2 slash 1 now. And I'll come in here and I'll just hit the up arrow a couple times. And I'll say 2 slash 1 is going to uh, that should be going to, let me just pull up GNS3 on this computer. No. Cancel. Yes. Uh, and 20 goes to let me just uh, 20 goes to serial 2 slash 0. 2 slash 3 goes to 15. Uh, 14 and then uh, 12. So this should be 2 slash 1. Actually, if you hover over this, this will tell you what it is. 2 slash 1, which is right. 14 is 2 slash 2. And 15 should be 2 slash 3. And it is 2 slash 3. So now we've got those mapped. I can go back to what I was doing before and say on 2 slash 1, that goes to 12. So I'll go ahead and minimize this. And I can say that um, on this guy, we'll say that uh, 511, so 2 slash 1 is to get to, we're going to say 115, and 0, 2 slash 0 is 511. And there we have it. So now we've got that back-to-back -back mapping in place. So now we've got bidirectional communication between, and what we're basically doing is we're setting up a full mesh. Now that is R11 back to R5. And then if I click the up arrow and I say um, 0, 2 slash 1 to 2 slash 2, so we're going to go to R14 now. We're going to say, and this guy now is going to be 114 to, and then we're going back to R11. This will be 141. And then, actually, I take that back. So actually, that's, that's correct. This one needs to go to... 2 slash 2. And I need to go ahead and pull this one out. And let me just do a do show frame route. Make sure that that's all squared away. So from 2 slash 1 to 2 slash 0 is correct. 2 slash 1 to 2 slash 2. Perfect. Excellent. So from 1 1, I did 1 1 5, and now I'm going to do a 151 to a zero two slash three. This one will be uh, going back to 11 will be 511. Now, the cool thing about the Delsey is it's locally significant. So we have that. So now if we type in do show frame route, we'll have that one added now as well. So what you should have is for every sort input interface, you should have three mappings to the other interface, 2 slash 1, 2 slash 2, 2 slash 3, from 2, two slash 0. So we're just going to repeat the process. I will bring you guys back in when this is all situated and ready to go, and then we will test the remote connectivity. We'll go ahead and R5 will should be able to ping R14, 15, and 11 respectively, and that will prove that our configurations are situated correctly. Now that we have all of our frame relay Interface to Delsey mappings in place for our any to any communication. So we have 2 slash 0 has 3, 2 slash 1 has 3, 2 slash 2 has 3, and 2 slash 3 has 3. So we should have full reachability from R14 to, or 
any router to any router is the idea here. We're not doing a full mesh configuration. So we're going to go ahead now and try this out. We're going to go to R5. And the first thing we're going to do is go to global config and interface serial 1 slash 0. We're going to type in do show IP interface for you to see if the interface is actually up. And at the moment, it is shut down. So we're going to type encapsulation as frame relay. No shut the interface. I'm going to do this to 14 just to test reachability. So go uh, interface serial 1 star 0. In cap is frame relay. No shut the interface. And going back to 5. The interface is up. So what we're going to do is a do show frame map. So right now we actually haven't learned any uh, information yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and type in and as soon as uh, 14 comes up we're going to see if any information is populating and nothing at the moment but that's okay. I'm going to type an IP address of 100.0.0.5 slash 24 and then on 14 I'm going to do the same thing so IP address of 100.0.0.14 slash 24 so now I go back to 5 and I do that show frame map nothing showing up yet we do a show frame relay map so let's go ahead and um, we're going to do a ping to 100.0.0.14. Okay, so as it sits right now, we have a small problem with reachability. So let's go ahead and do a show frame map. The problem is that we don't actually have any mappings in place. So let's go to global config, and I'm going to type in interface serial 1 slash 0. I'm going to type in no frame relay inverse ARP. Now inverse ARP is basically turning off the ability to dynamically learn any of your mappings from the frame relay network. So basically the service provider is not going to advertise any information to you. I can type in frame relay map and I can specify IP and the IP address in this particular case is 100.0.0.14 and I'm going to map that to a DELSI. The DELSI in this particular case is going to be 145. And I believe that is, or is it 514? It's one of the two. And I can hit broadcast. So now that I've done that, let's go to the other side and do show frame map. Okay, I do have a mapping here. And the reason I have it is because I I did this dynamically. If I go back over, oh, we'll test this out here in a moment. So we're going to type in uh, no frame relay inverse ARP and frame relay map IP to 100.0.0.5 is going to be we actually already learned this so I'm going to say the del C in this case is here is going to be 145 okay so now if I type in do show frame map now it's statically defined with broadcast actually I need to add broadcast to that at the end. Now what the broadcast command basically allows you to do is it allows you to uh, forward multicast traffic. It's actually replicated unicast over the network and that allows you to form multicast adjacency over frame relay. If I left the broadcast option off then I'd have to form neighbor adjacencies which are unicast based. So now I go back to 5 and hit the up arrow And I have my static mapping in there. So do ping 100.0.0.14. And I can ping it no problem now. I had to tell the local router how to get across the MPLS cloud. Or I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so used to MPLS. Frame relay in this particular case. Do ping 100.0.0.5. No problem. And then I could do, I could repeat this process over and over and over again. So it gives me the ability now if I wanted to ping, say, R4, R15, on R15, I can come in here and go config T, interface serial 1 slash 0, encapsulation is going to be frame relay. I could specify no frame relay inverse ARP to turn off that reverse mapping learning. I can also then type in encapsulation, or uh, IP address of 100.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
0 0.15 slash 24. And no, no shut. Once I do that, then I will have the configuration up and running pretty quickly. Now let's go over to 5 and do that show frame relay map. Now I'm still not learning anything dynamically though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go back to this portion here. I'm going to say to get to 15, use 515. And on 15, I'm going to do a do show frame map. And I don't learn anything, but that's okay. I'm going to type in frame relay map IP to 100.0.0.14 with a del C of, to get to 14, I'm going to say 514. But I'm going to say broadcast at the end of it so that I can reach it. So now I'm going to go over here to, to 14. I have to do the exact same thing, but in the reverse path. So hit this. I'm going to specify that it's 14. And for 14 to get to 5, it's going to be, or 15 is going to be 415. So 415 broadcast going back to 5. Whoops. Sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead and do ping 100.0.0.0.14. So we said to see 514 Do ping 100.0.0.15. Now, one thing that's really, really important is we would demand to make sure that the configuration between these devices is operational. The reason for that is because if we get into things like phase 3 DMVPN, that's going to be very, very important that we can, R5 can reach R15, and R11 can reach R14, and more importantly, that R14 could reach R15. Because if you're hairpinning inside the network here, that could be a problem if you can't reach where you gotta got to reach. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go back over to R20. All the interfaces are up, do show IP interface brief, except for uh, 2 slash 1, which is going to R11. So here's the key. Here's the next thing we want to do is a show frame relay route. Who is connected? Okay, so we have so inactive communication here. Which anytime you have inactive communication, and the only one that's inactive at the moment is R11. That's okay though. Let's go back to 14. So if traffic comes in from, I'm want to receive traffic from R14, which is zero two slash two. And it's going to uh, going to 415. It should get dropped out. Serial 2 slash 3 of 514. So now if I go back to 14 and I look at this mapping, I have 415 broadcast and I have 514 broadcast. Let's make sure that the configuration is correct. And they are. So show frame relay map. Okay, so I have these configurations in place now. Oh, see, that's my mistake right there. I mapped it to myself. So that's that's my mistake. So let's go ahead and uh, interface serial one slash zero. Do show run interface serial one slash zero. Um, I mapped it to myself. That's why it's not working. Go ahead and pull that out, and then say to get to fifteen. And we're gonna say do ping one hundred dot zero dot zero dot fifteen. That's better. I was looking at it. I'm like, wait a minute. That's a bad sign. So. 15 should be able to do the, re the reverse as well, and it can. And that's what you want to have. So that was just a miscommunication on my, my part. I will have the frame relay configuration ready for you guys to go when um, you guys load up. And um, the frame relay configuration will be its own dedicated uh, GNS3 file. You can feel free to just uh, grab that and um, install and ready to go. Beyond that, guys, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you for frame relay. Not a whole lot to it beyond that. Um, the only thing we haven't tested is R11, but I figure for right now we're okay without doing R11. It's just a repeat of everything we've already done. Thank you again for stopping by, and until next time, guys, take it easy.